All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play uh, Fossilus. Now, this is kind of an interesting game. Um, there's definitely some heavy components involved. Um, uh, it's really fun extracting fossils. In this game, we're paleontologists, and we're at a dig site, and we're trying to extract fossils from the dig site. And it kind of has this uh, these tweezers that you will use to do so, which almost kind of reminds me of that operation game I played when I was a little kid, with the exception of there's no buzzer in this game. So you don't have to worry about at least getting zapped or hitting one of the edges or something like that. But still, it kind of has that similarity to the game, at least when it comes to extracting fossils. So um, this game is done by a KTBG, uh, kids table board games, basically. So this game was designed for kids, but it's even got it even recommends components and modules in the game that you don't need to play with if you're playing with kids so that's really cool as well i thought but if you want you can still play with all of the stuff involved and that's what i will be showing you i'll be showing you everything this game has to offer uh, but first let's kind of just uh, show you guys how to set up this game first All right, so let's uh, start by showing you how you set up the game first. Let's start with, uh, obviously, some of the uh, normal stuff that you see in most games. Uh, so uh, these are the dinosaur cards, and um, uh, you'll shuffle the, the, shuffle the dinosaur pile, and you will reveal four to start with, okay? That's one of the things you'll do to set up, and we'll talk about how the dinosaurs work later on. Um, there's also uh, there are two other stacks of cards. We have tools and we have supplies. You'll shuffle both of these into their obviously separate piles and you reveal two from each of them forming basically the market, okay? And so that means you'll have access to both the tools and the supplies at the same time and you'll be able to purchase them. Now, how do you purchase Obviously, how do you purchase these tools and these supplies? Well, um, you'll notice right here, all these different tiles, stone, clay, and sand, all have some of these obviously things here. So we have amber, and then there's dinosaur eggs and fossils. So fossils, amber, and then there's cards that have the dinosaur eggs too, I believe. And so you'll be using these once, once you acquire them, you'll be using these to pay for these to acquire these. That's how that's going to work. So you, you always have access to four to look at, to choose from, to start the game off. Um, so that's sort of how you get started. You'll also have three separate piles of sand tiles. This will be like the discard pile, and you'll grab one with each of the three different symbols. So fossils and dinosaur eggs and amber. You'll separate them to three separate piles, so you, that way you can discard a sand tile to that those three separate piles. And you might be taking sand tiles out of the discard piles at times, it's possible, but most likely not going to happen in a two-player game, um, as often anyways. So let's get started with the rest of the setup. So you will sprinkle all the various fossils and hammers, there's hammers in here too, into, basically into here. You'll sprinkle it, and you don't need to really t worry too much where everything's going to go, but you'll sprinkle it in there like so. And then you will grab the tray lid here, and you will put it on top, and then you will shake it. Now, if you're listening to this at night, or you don't want it to be too loud, you might want to turn it down a notch because this might get a little loud. But I'm gonna shake this up a little bit. So that's basically how you would do that. You don't want to shake it um, in a particular corner like this maybe, or like this. You're trying to want to keep it, try to keep it nice and flat because you don't want all of the fossils and hammers ending up in just one corner or one side. But basically, that that's what you'll do. And then you will grab this here, 
which is our score tracker, but on the other side, you will slide this in like so. And then once it's slid in, you can remove the tray, the tray top, and you won't need this for the rest of the game. So just return it to the box. Okay, then we can start putting the various stone, sand, and clay tiles onto this grid. St uh, stone tiles have to go onto here, so there's four of them. So there'll be a stone tile here, here, and here. And then you'll fill in the rest of the grid with sand and clay randomly. After that, you'll have a, an additional layer of both stone, clay, and sand tiles. But you'll never put any of those tiles on the corner ends. So there'll only, only be one layer to start with on these corners. So all four corners. And only some of these these grid these these boxes here in the grid will have two layers on them it will only fill in about 10 of these in the middle here so only about 10 or so so let's get started let me just go ahead and put everything um on like so oh and one other thing when you put down a stone tile here you can't put an additional stone tile on top of another stone tile so you'll never have it like for instance You'll never have a stone tile like that with another one on top of it. Not when you're setting it up anyways. That will never happen. But yes, you'll set them like that, for instance. Okay, so let's, let me just finish the rest of this and I'll get back to you. All right, so now we've got all the tiles onto the board like so, kind of like something like this. And then you'll take your blocker panner your blocker panel, which doubles as a player aid as well. You'll use your blocker panel and you'll put it like this. And this requires two hands to do. Okay. You'll put it like this. And then you will take this out. Like that. Voila. That's how it's done. And then obviously you will set your score marker your scoreboard out like this. So now that we have our scoreboard out like so, just like that. So let's move that a little bit. Okay, so that's not fully completely set up, but it's almost, we're almost done with the setup. So then you will take nine, randomly nine skill tokens, okay? And you'll put them onto this grid here on the, on the uh, scoreboard like so. How do you claim these skill tokens, you may ask? Well, there are hammers inside of the dig site. And if you ever extract a hammer, you can ex you'll be able to exchange the hammer for a skill token, which will give you an ability that you'll have for the rest of the game. And you can have up to three skill tokens. Okay, you can have up to three of them, but you also have to be able to extract three hammers, and you can never extract more than one hammer per turn. Okay, then there's tons of event cards, but you'll shuffle and randomly deal out three event cards face down, so you don't know what they are, and you'll put them onto the table like so. And then these cubes are plaster, and you'll put out a total of eight plaster cubes, Per, or should I say four plaster cubes per player. So if you're playing a two-player game, you're only going to put eight plaster cubes onto the event cards here, okay? This is the plaster pool, and this is the plaster supply. Whenever you take a plaster, you're going to take it from the plaster pool. If at any time on your turn, you can't take it from the plaster pool because it's currently empty, then yes, you'll be allowed to take it from the plaster supply, okay? But that's how that's going to work. Now, that's pretty much everything set up. Everyone is going to get a player board, okay? And the player board is going to tell you what you can do on your turn. You can spend four energy to do a variety of different things. After you've spent all the energy, then if you have the resources, as in amber, dinosaur eggs, and fossils, if you have their current resources to buy certain cards, you can buy one card, and then, if you have at least one bone in order to 
claim a dinosaur, you can claim a dinosaur to your lab. And so, for instance, if I wanted to claim this dinosaur to my lab, I would have to have at least one of these three bones already sitting in my storage here on my player board, okay? I would need that, but then I could claim it. But in order to get the points for this dinosaur, I will have to be able to collect all of these dinosaur bones here. So two of these and one of these in order to claim this dinosaur and get the points. Now you can never have more than one dinosaur in your lab unless you have a skill token that says otherwise. But normally you cannot have more than one dinosaur in your lab until it's been completed, as in you've acquired all of the bones and you've basically placed it on the dinosaur. If you do manage to get a dinosaur on your turn, meaning you've got all three of these bones covered and the dinosaur is done, then you'll immediately score the points onto the scoreboard here immediately. And then when you get another dinosaur bone that meets another dinosaur, then you can claim another dinosaur to your lab. So that's how you're going to get more dinosaurs. Now, once you put a bone, once you put a fossil onto a dinosaur, it stays there for the rest of the game. So be careful when choosing what fossils you want to put on a dinosaur, even if that means that, because maybe later down the road, you'll have a better chance to complete another dinosaur but the dinosaur bone that you need or the dinosaur fossil that you need is currently sitting on another dinosaur. Well, sorry, it stays there for the rest of the game. So make, make sure to note that. Be careful before choosing what dinosaur fossils to put from your storage to your dinosaur. But that's basically how that's going to work. And then in uh, whoever's going last. So if you're playing a two player game, three player game or four player game or five player game for that matter. Whoever's going last will have the option to go first, as in they'll get to choose where they're going to put their, you know, their meeple, for instance. And if you're playing a five-player game, you can even put it in the center. So, but, you know, for instance, they can choose a corner if they want to, and then basically something like this, for instance. So if I was going first and I'm green, I would be the last player to obviously put down their meeple, their paleontologist. That's how that's going to work for the setup. All right, so that's pretty much all of the setup, I think. Obviously, we have some score uh, tokens here to keep track of our score as well. But yeah, that's basically the whole setup of the game. So, how do you play the game? Well, first of all, you can spend four energy on your turn. And you can use your energy to do a variety of different things. What can you do on your turn? Well, to start with, one of the things that you'll get to do on your turn is gain plaster. So for every plaster you obtain, it's one energy. So you could do a maximum of four plaster on your turn, but then that would end your turn, basically, in a sense, because unless you had some tools. Now, there are tools you can acquire. So once you have a tool, you can spend you can actually use your tools on your turn whenever you want. They're a one-time use though. So once you use them, you'll flip them face down, but you'll still keep them because they're worth victory points at the end of the game. And you're still gonna claim the victory points whether you use your tool or not, okay? But that's how that's going to work. Um, if you like, for instance, this hot coffee is, I can spend two extra energy this turn whenever I happen to drink the nice little hot coffee, okay? Now, supplies, some will give you straight victory points if you acquire them, but some will also give you fossils, too. Now, if you are able to uh, buy this card by spending one amber and one fossil, you'll now have this nice uh, fossil here, which I think is like a rib, right? And then you can use this even to go... You can even use this to match one of the dinosaurs. So this Brachiosaurus here has that exact dinosaur bone, so you could use that to the equation to finish the Brachiosaur. That would be fine. That would be allowed. So that's another way you can get fossils. You can get them from the dig site, obviously, but you can also get them from the market as well. Now, you don't have to unused fossils 
if you have fossils you weren't able to use for a dinosaur or chose not to use, then you'll still get points based on the amount of fossils you have and what kind of fossil they are. The skulls never get put on a dinosaur, so at the end of the game, they'll be worth six points for every skull you have. Or sorry, not six points. They'll be worth 12 points for every skull you have at the end of game. This is for the plaster. You see, one of the actions you can take on your turn is extraction. So let's say there was a spot. Let's say this paleontologist was right here, and we have, ooh, we have some fossils in this one. They could extract a fossil from here because they're right next to it. They're adjacent if they had the energy. Obviously, it costs one energy to extract a fossil. Okay, but they also have to have enough plaster. That's what plaster is for in this game. You need plaster in order to obtain fossils. So in order, in order to obtain the skull, you would need six plaster. In order to obtain this, you would just need two plaster. So that's why you need to get plaster if you want to extract fossils, you're going to need plaster. However, hammers do not cost any plaster at all. So you could always obtain a always obtain a hammer, but only once per turn, and that's assuming the hammer is even in here. So you'll have to look down and actually see if what you're looking for is even in there to begin with. And some of these might even be completely empty. You just don't know. But basically, yes, you can extract fossils for one energy, and obviously you can gain plaster for one energy as well. You can move up to two spaces on your turn for the cost of one energy. So, And you can also move diagonally. So, for instance, that is a legal move. I moved to two spaces diagonally. That is a legal move. So that would only cost me one energy to, energy to do. So... Now, um, there's also a couple of other things that can happen. Sometimes tiles will slide around and push other players off. That does happen, although it's usually not going to happen too often unless a player intentionally does it. It's probably not going to happen too often in a two-player game, but if you're playing five players, Oh, man, all chaos will ensue. People will be falling over left and right. They'll be falling off the dig site left and right. And so when that happens, so if a meeple is to fall off, or even if it's to fall in here, if it falls in here, actually into one of these, then you'll take it out and you'll put it out on one of the sides that you choose. So here, 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 or here. But yeah, you'll take it out. But if it falls off of one of the sides then you'll just leave it on the side that it fell. So if it got pushed off over here, then that's what's going to happen. It's gonna end up over there. Now, how do you get back on? Well, you, you'll need to spend one energy to get back on. But here's another issue that could happen. What happens if all of the tiles on the side you are currently on, so if the player was on this side here, if all of the tiles were completely gone, how would they get back on? Well, they would have to spend one action, or should I say one energy, to grab a sand tile from the discard pile, put it somewhere on this side, and then spend another energy just to get back on, obviously, the board. And maybe I'll even need my tweezers here to extract this guy because he's stuck. There we go. But yes, it would take you two energy just to get back on. So that could be that can also happen. So that's another way you can use energy on your turn. If you want to do much of anything, you're going to need to do that in order to get back into the game. But basically, you understand that, at least. Now, there is obviously still the matter of the tiles them moving themselves. So that's the main actions. In order to move a sand tile, it costs one energy to dig a sand tile or otherwise slide a sand tile. So for instance, if I was over here and I pushed this sand tile in this direction, which would push it off by the way, that would cost one energy to do that. Also, let's say I was over here and I wanted to push uh, this in this direction. I could, 
but it would cost me three energy because I'm on stone to move it this direction like this, okay? Because I'm currently on stone. Now, I can't move stone if I'm not on stone. So, if I was, for instance, on this tile, and I wanted to move the stone tile, I could not because it's heavier than sand. I also couldn't move in this direction. I couldn't move, use, I could not move at all because I need to be on the current tile in order to move it. So I could, for instance, be over here and then push the two clay tiles in this direction, pushing this one off if I wanted to, but I have to be able to be on a powerful or a heavy or that type of basically uh, type of tile in order to move it. So stone can push anything. It can push, it can push clay, it can push sand, it doesn't matter, it can push other stone. But obviously sand cannot push stone, clay cannot push stone, but clay can push sand. Now, you could also move tiles that are on this top area here in this direction, that's allowed, that would work. Also, if there was a tile missing, this can also happen too, I suppose. That is also legal, if you had the energy to do all that, of course. So you could do it that way, for instance. Um, and then, of course, another thing that can happen is what if, what if there was a tile here, there was somebody here, and then, ooh, better yet, let's put that tile there, let's put him there, let's put that there. What if I was to be, what if this player was here? What would happen then? They could move this sand tile in this direction, because they're only moving sand after all. They, this player here would get squished, but he wouldn't because he would just get moved up to this tile here that was pushed in this direction. That's what would happen. And then of course, you know, if this was the case, this player could move one sand tile in this direction, pushing him off, and obviously pushing the tile off. That's how you're going to acquire tiles, by the way. You want to acquire these tiles so you can buy these cards. It's the only way you're going to get them unless you have a tool that says otherwise. The sand pal is pretty cool. It says you can remove two, any two sand tiles. So if you use this on your turn, you can just take two sand tiles right off the board. And because you're removing them, you're getting them, which is cool. So that's a nice little way of getting tiles obviously to buy some cards so you can move any remove any two so that's really cool i like that a lot but yes that's basically how moving the sand tiles moving the clay tiles and stone tiles is going to work there's obviously a lot of rules involved in doing that but once you finally do get a spot then you can start extracting once you have enough plaster you can for sure start ex extracting and getting a whole bunch of stuff. Now, remember the hammers allow you to acquire these skill tokens, which you'll have for the entire game. You can have up to three. Once you take off all of the plaster from here, then the player who did that will get the event and will activate the event at the end of their turn. They'll take care of whatever that event does. Um, and it might be something that lasts quite a while. Then after that, they'll put another four for each player back on to the next event card forming another plaster pool a uh, basically plaster pool and they're going to do that every time so you'll you'll do this up to four times so after the third event is taken there will be one more round with eight more plaster on there on there but basically that's how everything's going to work that's how the game will end too. And everyone will get one more turn after all of the plaster is removed for the last round. Everybody will get one more turn. But basically that's how you play Fossilus. So I hope this, ex I hope this worked well at explaining obviously how you're going to um, play this game. Obviously you can claim a dinosaur at the end of your turn if you have at least one bone, which I mentioned earlier. So you could do that after you uh, buy a card if you can, but you're gonna do it in that particular order. Spend energy, buy a card, claim one dinosaur. That's how you're gonna do it. And you can use as many tools as you have, as you want on your turn. There's no limit and they cost no energy 
to use them either. So that's another awesome benefit. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to leave a like. And, uh, you know, let's all go for a nice uh, dig and see what we can get. Ooh, I got two bones. Does that mean I get to keep both? Absolutely not. Ooh, and one's a hammer. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.